Good evening, this is Jared with the Real Building Blocks. Today, we're going to go over uh, what should be our final overview topic. And that's going to be, actually it's not, there's one more after this. This one's going to be about finding your purpose. So the reason that finding your purpose is important is because we all have a purpose whether you choose to believe it or not, whether you want to classify it as fate or destiny or anything like that, we all have some purpose in the world. And some people's purpose is to be nothing and do nothing. Those are the decisions that people, but those are mostly tied to decisions that people make. Um, you can actively choose to have no purpose, you can neglect to pursue a purpose, but unless you're actually going to do the work required to identify said purpose and pursue said purpose, then it's going to be a waste of your time to begin with. So <clears throat> let me give a little, little story. So. In my career as a federal employee, I have well, also in my time in the Marine Corps. Um, anytime I went somewhere new, went to a new job, um, I always found problems with the work being done. And because of those problems, uh, I always was consistently looking for a solution on how to fix those problems, how to make them better, how to solve our problems and then how to um, facilitate a better workflow. So I was always, I was ingrained early on to look at process improvement as part of my job. And so being in supply and logistics, uh, it made it easy to look for ways to do things better, right? Uh, so that's what I did. I always looked at what can I fix? What's broken? So what can I fix? And even as I left the Marine Corps and went on into the civilian sector, uh, I found that this internal desire to fix everything uh, became more prominent. And it wasn't, it, it's not in the negative sense of fix everything. It's just that um, I was thrown into some pretty chaotic things. Uh, for example, uh, I worked at an Army ROTC and I had to manage all of the equipment. Uh, that's one of the duties that I had. But none of the equipment that I had to manage uh, was properly inventory. So even on day one, I had no idea how much stuff I had and physically looking at all of the stuff and looking at what's on my list of things is totally different. Like I had a list of five items and I'm looking around at a full warehouse, you know, easily worth hundreds of thousands without even really poking around. You can easily just, boom, hundreds of thousands. That's a half million dollars worth of shit right there, easy. You know, that's, this, that's a situation that I was I, I brought into. So uh, naturally, I did what I do best. I started at square one. Okay, let's figure out what we have. Then figure out what to do with it. And then I worked through the process of actually fixing that place. And it, by the time I left a year and a half later, it was a pretty streamlined operation. It, it was running really well. Uh, I had disposed of a lot of equipment. I had, to tr I had traveled to like four different states uh, for various reasons to you know, drop off equipment, pick up equipment, different things like that. And so <clears throat> in a year and a half, I did more than the previous tenant did over the course of several years. And that's just kind of the way things work. That's the way that my career has been everywhere I've been. Even today, 
just this past week, um, uh, I have now been uh, reassigned. Uh, they created a new billet for me so that I can go down the rabbit hole of mass data reconciliations because I showed them that there was a problem. And now they created a new billet for me to do this work, which I actually just finalized the numbers like uh, like an hour ago. So it's, it's kind of scary. Um, I actually have 550 million records of data to aggregate and analyze, to fix, check it, see if it's broken, see, you know, there's a, we're looking at like a thousand steps just to figure out what's going on. But still, like, that's what I do. I kind of walk into a place, I see all of the problems, I make all the problems go away. I fix them ethically, of course. I'm not breaking the law or anything. I'm just, I'm recognizing that there is a problem where no one else either is or no one cares to do so. Uh, so this whole, you know, um, there's a movie, um, The Goods Live Hard, Sell Hard. Uh, there's a character in there, Don Reddy, and they call him a mercenary, but he just shows up and just sells a crap ton of cars. And I feel like I'm in the same type of line of work where I show up and I fix all the problems and I make the operation better and I make everyone around me better. But then once that happens, um, I'm no longer challenged. And so I have to go find a new job, something that's going to challenge me more. And so through the process of me figuring out or trying to figure out what my purpose is, I realized that this, you know, this fixer uh, status, if you will, is what I am the best at. It's crazy amazing how good I am at this. And it's not me trying to boast, it's just me being realistic. Uh, and that's, that's what I discovered about myself as my purpose. And this is something I've known for years. I've, I've talked about this with other people for years. Uh, I've, I've mentioned these things and I've known it. But I didn't really, it didn't really click as it being my purpose until I actually read the book that I'm going to recommend in a couple of minutes. Once I read this book, through the course of it, I'm thinking, okay, well, what's my purpose? Where's my place in this? Um, and, you know, how do I get myself from point A to point B? And, and as you read through it, you'll understand more of what I'm talking about. Uh, but that's something that I discovered about myself. My purpose is to see a problem of a messed up system, uh, operation, things that you can do better, and then to find a solution to fix them. That's exactly how this entire framework was put together because I saw problems. And so now I'm providing content to try to help people fix those problems. It's what I do. All right. So when I'd figured out what my purpose was, I actually restructured my business to align with my purpose. So now when I communicate with potential leads, my focus is going to be 100% on what the problem is because uh, obviously, with me promoting all of these foundational changes, uh, this is giving me a framework to then promote said services, but also um, I'm putting a lot more emphasis on the problem and solving the problem. And this is stuff that I've told clients before, and I'm just now starting to heed my own advice, and it's crazy good. It's crazy awesome. And that's actually part of why I'm delivering this content is because I'm hearing myself say it and therefore it's actually soaking in because I already know it, but it hasn't soaked in. There's all kinds of stuff that I know that unless I tell somebody, I'm probably not going to do it for myself. And that's part of why you're getting such 
such a high level or not high level the the reason that this content's out here is so i can help myself so i can help my clients so if you guys get uh, great value out of this that's even better my, my goal is to give everyone the answers that they need so that they can solve the problems on their own because realistically if you can't grow yourself to say five thousand a month in revenue then it's going to be really hard for me to help you because yeah, that's like a baseline if you're not making five thousand in revenue a month then it's it's really hard to help and the reason why it's hard to help is because uh because of the, the price point where my services are at i typically price out a website easily at five to ten k and that's without even discussing the particulars and so uh, that's all of why i've restructured my business to align with my purpose uh, so that i can promote my value promote my expertise more and so the way that i discovered what my purpose was was through a book and this book was recommended uh, through another podcast, through the MFCEO podcast. Uh, Andy Frizella talks about this book uh, several times throughout the course of years on his podcast. I know this because I marathoned everything from day one, and now I'm about a year behind. Uh, so I'm almost, almost current. Uh, but the book is called Third Circle Theory. And the author... His name is Pageman Gadimi. I don't know if I said that right, uh, but everyone calls him PJ. Um, I probably butchered his name. Um, but this book is Third Circle Theory, and the whole pr premise of the book is that there are three circles, and you need to figure out where you're at within those circles. Right. Uh, you know, people who are just happy working for someone else, collecting their check, going home, working nine to five and nothing else. There's people out there like that. And you probably know them. Uh, a good movie reference of this would be uh, the other guys with Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell. So Will Ferrell's character is exactly like that. Just work the nine to five. Don't put myself in danger. Don't put myself out there. Do all the paperwork. That's this type of person. And so that type of person is always going to be in that first circle. And there's several elements within the circle. And actually, um, there's eight slices in the first circle. So that means there's eight components. Uh, in the next circle, uh, there are six components and then the third circle there are there's one major component um, so the whole premise of the book is for you to work through these components work through these slices of the pie to overall round yourself out to be able to move up to the next level to be able to achieve the status of third circle or even beyond. And a lot of this is just talking about, it's, it's not really talking about being successful in life. It, the whole focus is being successful through your purpose. And so through this book, I discovered my purpose. And it's really, really good. Uh, it's some, some parts of it is a, it's a hard read. <laughs> Uh, it was hard to get through the first time I read it. I went back and read it a second time uh, almost immediately. And it was a little easier to digest uh, because I, I knew there was something there. I just, I didn't know what it was. And, um, so I actually went back and read it a second time before I actually figured out what my purpose was because the whole time I was reading it, I was trying to figure out what my purpose was. Kind of like when I was in uh, you know, middle school and high school, I would, do my homework in class while the teacher's teaching the subject. 
I'm trying to figure out the answer before I get to the end. That's kind of how I am. But uh, so I went back and read it a second time, and a lot of the, the principles and theories and components uh, clicked a lot better for me on the second go. Uh, but nonetheless, it, it's been a crazy revelation, and it's helped me um, focus my sights on the places where I need to. And so I'm really hoping that uh, everyone out there hearing this is going to, uh, they're going to pick up the book, you're going to read it, and you're going to figure out what your purpose is. Now, the reason why this matters is because if your purpose and your job or your business are not in alignment, if they're not following the same path, if they're not synchronized or in sync, then there's a problem there is because your your mind your body your soul is driving you in one direction but you're going in another direction and so you want to put those onto the same path and once you do that uh, you're going to find a lot more enjoyment out of whatever you do that's why people say that um you know if you like what you do, then uh, you enjoy doing it and it no longer becomes work. This is kind of similar to that. It's not about just your passion. It's about your purpose. For me, there's nothing that I can do to stop myself from trying to make a situation better. There's nothing I can do to stop that. It's so deeply ingrained that I'm going to do that no matter what, every time. And so instead of trying to fight something like that, I embrace it. And it's taken me very far. And I'm hoping that the same can happen for you guys as well. So uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, comments, complaints, uh, comment in the group, Real Building Blocks. And uh, let's keep the conversation going. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear uh, if anyone else has read this book. I'd really love to hear what your feedback is. I'd really love to hear uh, what you discovered about yourself because it's amazing uh, the power of a book like this can do to a person. So uh, this is Jared with The Real Building Blocks signing off. Until next time. Later.